Welcome everybody to Financial Freedom Classroom. We accelerate your results. We are John and Sherry Locke. We are owners of Lock in Your Success LLC, which is a stock options training, coaching, and education firm. In the past, we've managed many successful businesses, including this one, and also in the arena of automotive, real estate, computer consulting, coaching, martial arts, etc. We are active real estate investors. We've also dabbled in spec home building, rehabs, and rentals. Before we get going, we'd just like to remind you that um, the information on the presentation is for, for general information only. It's been prepared without taking into account your objectives, financial situation, or needs. So before acting on any information, you should consider the appropriate of the information for your own objectives. Also, we are not financial advisors, accountants, lawyers, or tax preparers, and therefore the information in the presentation is no substitute for professional legal, financial, accounting, or tax advice. Question. Business websites, do we really need them? And I say, hell yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But websites are the way people find businesses these days. So tonight we have Bo Esby with us tonight. This is the CEO of the Idea Garage and she brings 20 years of experience in building businesses and uh, she has co-founded the Idea Garage and she is passionate about building teams and producing high quality products and websites. So uh, we are excited to have her with us tonight. Bo, we're going to start out. Can you say hello? Hi, I'm glad you have me on tonight. Um, thank you for the invitation. I am excited to have you. So why don't we just jump right into it and ask a couple. We're going to just, it's going to be a question and answer type uh, tonight. So does a business need a website? And if so, why? Wow, I could talk for 45 minutes on that one. <laughs> um, it, it, the yellow pages is over. It, it's, it's over. And we're having this interesting tipping point where, um, the older generations now um, still don't understand why the younger generations aren't coming into their business, you know, into the doors. Um, why is business slowing down, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, it, it's gotten so intense that with the smartphones out there, about 60% of web searches are done on smartphones now. So people use their smartphones to find a business anything that they need, um, plumbing, restaurant, coffee shop, anything, um, financial advisors, uh, lawyers, insurance companies, um, investment firms, they find it all online. So you're looking at the mid to younger generations now that that's the only place they look. So um, if a business doesn't have a website, the short answer is they're handing their customers over to their, to their competition. Oh, absolutely. I would totally agree with that. It's uh, it's amazing how you really don't need a storefront any longer to be a successful business. Absolutely. Um, so the next question, if we were starting from scratch, what would the first steps be to build a website? Well, there's a lot of technical work that goes into a website. So you can either do it yourself with uh, some of the programs out there like uh, web.com, GoDaddy, um, Weebly, just trying to think of a couple of them off the top of my head, um, or you can pay uh, a designer to do it for you. And in the design world, there's levels there too, so you need to be very careful. Um, you have designers that will charge you 20 grand. Now your website is going to be as kicking as Nike, you know, and staples and all those. But for 20 grand, you have to decide if that's what you really need. Right at the bottom of that, you have developers that um, pump out websites that look like everyone else's website. So the attraction of your customers isn't really going to be there, and they're very, very inexpensive, like the 99 a month type web developers. And then somewhere right in the middle is where I personally believe every business should go. Go to a developer that is uh, producing high quality custom sites, not templates that they all look the same. Um, a custom site that fits the business, but is also not going to charge you an arm and a leg. Um, mm -hmm. But if you want to do it yourself, I would, I would, you know, would recommend. Um, I wouldn't recommend any of them, but if you want to do it yourself, GoDaddyWeb.com, they've got templates that you can plug in things, et cetera, et cetera. The result might not be as great, and the thing that I tell businesses is if you're going to spend money on marketing, this is a huge 
huge place to spend it because, and it's a good, good place to spend it. People surf the web and they will leave your site in 1.2 seconds if the first impression is not high end. If your mm -hmm. website looks cheap, then you must be cheap or your business must not be very good. Actually, can I tell a fun story? <laughs> this is a personal story, actually. Um, yeah, we, yeah, go ahead. We, yeah. we camp, and we have an RV, and at the end of the season, we need to hire a pressure washer. And I did what everyone does, and I went online, and I looked at three or four websites. Now, I'm in the business, so I understand that, yes, yeah, somebody could have a, a kind of an awkward-looking website or a boring website, and they're probably still really good, and I kind of know that in my head, but still, I looked at three or four websites, and psychologically, I just I picked the one that was beautiful, and because I thought, oh well, these guys know what they're doing, right? <laughs> and um, called them, booked an appointment, and they came out, and they came out in this in this truck that I wasn't sure if it was going to make it all the way down the driveway, and you know, he came out in these like grungy overalls, and everything. it was the nicest guy ever, but I looked at him and thought, wow, I, that's not what I thought I was getting. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the point, is if you want them to think of your company and your services as high-end, your website has to look high-end. Yeah, that's awesome. So let me ask you this. Um, WordPress is, my understanding, is like the standard. It, it, would you recommend that's what people use, or... I would recommend that that's what they use because that's the way um, everything is going now. Uh, you'll get the most support out of it. You'll get the most um, plugins, which are um, you know, kind of like devices that let you do things like contact forms and selling things online. You get the most options and the most support, and it's I think it's one of the safer platforms out there as far as security and getting hacked, et cetera, et cetera. But WordPress is... Um, up and coming, the rest of them are kind of stagnant. So, yeah, I we use WordPress, and I'm 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 still a novice trying to learn. You know, um, so can you describe what a successful website needs for management? I, I mean, I, mean, I just think I know about the amount of time that I spend trying to learn, uh, this time that I spend trying to be creative and have things that are intriguing or so can you, any thought on that? Well, yeah, I was, the reason I was pausing is there's a couple, there's a couple thoughts I have. Um, a website is a great thing. Uh, if you don't get your website to produce, then there's no point. It's like putting a billboard up in the desert and crossing your fingers hoping someone's going to see it. So it's one thing to build a website, but unless that website performs for you, there's no point. There's really no point. I mean, your clients that get your business card will find your website, but nobody else will. So management, uh, the basic minimum management is you should have somebody going in there updating content, um, updating the SEO with the search engine optimization, putting in keywords, meta, meta tags, all that type of stuff so your site is fresh. I know a lot of people that build a site and then they don't touch it for months. Um, and then they don't know why people can't find them on Google. <laughs> so Google looks for sites that are active, that are changing, um, that the content is changing, that Google also looks for websites. What, when I say Google, I just want everyone to know that includes Yahoo and Bing and et cetera, et cetera. But the search engines want um, and pick up more easily sites that have fresh content, um, updated uh, plugins, updated uh, security settings, updated SEO. So if somebody was going to be successful in optimizing their website, they would be spending a few hours a week actually going in and doing that. So, yeah, that leads me to a question. Um, you talked a little bit, what I'm wondering is, is I know that for that activity to happen, Things like you want comments or you might want, um, you know, you want people to click the like button and so forth. How do you tell sometimes with those comments, because I know there's a lot of spam out there. I've yes. seen it myself. Um, how do you tell the difference between a genuine comment and a spam comment? <laughs> a spam comment. The spam <laughs> comments usually start out with, I really love this post. <laughs> <laughs> That's a spam comment. Um, if a comment actually addresses what you're talking about, 
then the chances are good it's not spam. Um, there are ways to set up your website and you know talk to your developer or learn it yourself, Sherry, like you're doing. Um, but you're you're getting really good at it. So, um, but there are ways to have your developer set it up so um, that much of the spam can be blocked and uh, certain requirements can happen. People. If they're required to enter a CAPTCHA form, for example, to say that they're a human being, you're going to cut down 98% of the spam. Does that, does that, do you think, deter someone from making a comment with that, with that form and they have to complete that or no? Um, I think there's a little bit of that in there. So it's kind of a give and take. Um, if you really didn't want to um, do that, have them fill out the CAPTCHA form, then what I would do is probably spend a little bit more money for a monthly service, uh, a service that's probably around $20 to $30 a month that will scan them for you. Um, you know, when, when you have a Gmail account and stuff goes right into the spam box, there's really not a perfect solution other than you going through and evaluating each one. If somebody puts a link to a website, a link to another blog, um, the title of their company with a space and then .com, do you know what I mean? Um, those, are, those are spam. Those are people that are trying to ride your coattails. Right, right. I know. I see them. Gosh, I see them a lot. <laughs> it's yeah, exactly. um, So I think we talked a little, little bit about this, but realistically, how much time? So you said a couple hours a week. Um, and so what, what, do you, what would that include? Like what would, should you be doing? Uh, a couple hours a week, if you can optimize photos, which is also, you know, a, a lot of people put photos on. I highly suggest you uh, do a little bit of research on how to optimize a photo because that's going to double your chances of getting high on the search engines. Um, updating photos, uh, blog, 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 blog. I cannot say that enough. Um, a neat little story. I was just talking to an associate and they were working with one of their clients and 18 months ago it was a one man show, he was barely getting by, barely making any money. He, um, he got out there, he blogged five days a week <laughs> and within 18 months he pulled in $400,000 um, a year and had retainers for over $200,000 worth of work waiting in line to be done. So blogging is, if somebody says, what's the number one thing, I'll tell you, blog, because blogging will get you. Remember how I said the search engines love new content? The more new mm -hmm. content you have on your website, the higher up you're going to get your ranking. Um, other than that, though, you really need to check into your security settings, make sure that those haven't been tampered with, um, you need to make sure that your firewall is, is intact and there's no DDoS attacks, et cetera, et cetera. So update your plugins. You just have to make sure there are no cracks in you, the structure of the website that somebody can get through to hack the site. Yeah, well, I can tell you John has had that happen to him. It was, I know, it just was so time consuming and just really, really took a lot of time and effort and aggravation, and that is no fun. So, yeah, and, and you end up paying a developer a lot of money to get your site back up, um, and a lot of hosting companies don't really want to help with that either because once you've been hacked, the whole world knows you've been hacked, and you are a very easy target once you've been hacked once. Yeah, no, I well, he, I don't, he's done something, and we haven't had an attack for quite some time, so, um, but it was no fun when it was happening, I can tell you that, that's for sure. Let me see. So what are the tools needed for a successful website? So I'm sure there are tons. I mean, I know I'm looking at and I get updated plugins and I get, you know, alerts for that and so forth, but I'm sure that there are many more that I don't even know about. Well, if we're going to define um, a website as being successful in bringing customers to you, bringing leads, um, the tools needed there are all SEO. It's one thing to go in and update your photos and blog and everything. That's going to help you on the search engines. But if you want to capture a lead, that's the best. That's the companies that actually invest a little bit of time and money in generating leads and creating what's called like a landing page. Uh, for those who don't know what a landing page is, 
landing page is you you get them there or, or they click on a blog and there's something on the blog that says, uh, would you like a free consultation? Enter your name and email and we'll get back to you. That name and email gets um, captured into a database and then quarterly you can send something out. Valentine's Day is coming up. Don't forget about your loved one. Um, you know, Christmas is on the way, flowers are a great thing. Can you tell I've been talking to a florist lately? Um, I just got done talking to a florist about uh, their website, so I got flowers on the mind. But um, the tools needed really is, it's, like I said, it's one thing to build it. If you just build it, it's not going to help you. It's not really going to do anything for you. Uh, if you do the SEO work, it's going to start to get people to find you. The best thing you can ever do is once they find you, capture their attention. Are you interested in the top 10 tools uh, that, for financial freedom, for example? What are the top 10 things people should do to take care of their, uh, you know, their finances? Download this, and you have to enter your name and email to download it. And then once you've got the name and email, then you can, in a very friendly and not salesy way, say, here are some other things that might help you, you know, and then boom, all of a sudden that becomes a client. People that do that take off big time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, everybody wants to take off, that's for sure. Um, so let's see, so the next thing we have is can you discuss a little bit about the sales funnel theory and how that works? And websites just can really play into that with some of the um, customer-oriented so software that's out there and the online software. We use Infusionsoft now, we used Aweber, um, Constant Contact was another one just so you can start campaigns and stuff, but can you talk a little bit about the sales funnel theory? Absolutely, it's almost like we segued right into it. <laughs> mm, I know. <laughs> Funny how that works. Funny how that works. Everything I'm talking about is, is called inbound marketing, and inbound marketing is, it is the next thing. If you get on the wave now, you're going to be on the top. Um, it used to be, you know, pay-per-clicks and things like that. And pay-per-clicks work every now and then. Um, I'm in the Northeast, and it's, you know, March 2015. So if anybody <laughs> remembers that, then they'll know we've had, I don't know, 12 feet of snow. So, you know, a, a snow removal company would benefit hugely from a pay-per-click because it's instant. But for other things like trying to uh, help people with portfolios and things like that and get, getting clients um, and leads, inbound marketing is really the way you want to go. That's where the sales funnel really works. And what that is is, first off, your SEO is going to get, let's say, a thousand people to your website this month. And then you're going to offer something on the website. Uh, you know, enter your email and you'll get this free PDF, you know, ebook on fill in the blank. Those thousand, then, you know, a hundred of them are going to take you up on that, and then you keep touch with those hundred out of your database uh, and keep contacting them and updating them in, you know, not a pushy way, in a helpful way, and then you're on their mind when they think, you know, I really need to update my portfolio, and the first person that pops up into mind is you and then they'll reach out and they'll convert into a client. So you could get a thousand, and every company is going to be different, a thousand you know, hits on a website for some companies can mean a hundred clients. For some companies, a thousand hits on a website could mean one client. It depends. Your fun, everyone's funnel is going to be different, but the funnel is really important. Um, the sales funnel theory, that's the funnel when it comes to inbound marketing. The sales funnel theory in in product, um, and I, I wouldn't know how, how you would say it, Sherry, because you and I have talked about this, but in product is for 1995, you can purchase this program, and then they purchase it, and then the, maybe they'll purchase the next program, which is a little bit more expensive. They're sort of tiptoeing into the big program, the $2,000 program. So both of the funnels are very similar. Does that make right. sense? Oh yeah, the um, and just with websites, I think that it, obviously in just automation with some of those software programs, it just really lends itself to just automated, automated sales. Which is really obviously, if you're a website and you want to do that, that's that's where to go. Exactly, know. and our company does that. Um, we have one of the leading software programs, and we do that for clients too. And 
you know, I tell clients, you know, I'll meet a, a lawyer who makes $200 an hour, and they'll say to me, well, um, great, I'm going to blog. <laughs> and I'm like, well, awesome, go ahead and blog, but keep this in mind, you make $200 an hour. It takes you an hour to write a blog, you've kind of lost $200. You can pay somebody else, you know, $30 to write that blog, and now you're making 170 still, if that makes sense. So, <laughs> no, it definitely makes sense. Yeah. John and I have this conversation all the time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it, it's why I tell everybody, get a cleaning lady, you know. <laughs> Don't clean your house. <laughs> <laughs> you're just losing money. Time is money for people like us, and it's really important to pay the right people to do it. And our company does that. We have the inbound software, and we see great success with it with clients. And it's nice because they can sit back, let us do it, and then just count the leads that come in. Right. And that's very exciting, I can tell you, just by watching sometimes my dashboard, watching it go up, it's pretty exciting. So. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? It is. Um, so w one of the things that is really, uh, it's, it's a mystery I think to a lot of people and I just, I keep trying to learn more and more about it is social media. So how would you, how do you integrate social media with your website? And man, that's a huge topic, but. <laughs> it is a huge topic, but. Take, um, take a bite. Uh, take a bite. If, if I'm limited to a few minutes on the question, what I would tell someone is uh, have your social media widgets prominent. Um, you know, the icons prominent on every page, uh, anywhere that they can, you know, click on it to find out more about you. It's really crucial for most businesses to have Facebook, Twitter, Google+, um, Foursquare for restaurants, et cetera, et cetera, um, Pinterest for photographers, but have those very prominent on the website. The other thing, too, is there are ways that you can set up something called seamless posting where when you post something on your website it automatically gets sent to Twitter and Facebook and your subscribers so it's more having to do it once. I hear a lot of business owners that think they tell me I can't keep up with Facebook, I can't keep up with Twitter and I say you don't have to. <laughs> you can set it up in such a way that you put it into one place and it goes everywhere. So that's, that's the easiest way to streamline it, um, and I advise that to everyone. And then that way you're blogging, which means you're what? Raising your ranks on the search engines, and those blogs go right to Facebook, right to Twitter, which increases the activity over there too. So there's ways you can streamline it. Yeah, that's, it's definitely it becomes almost mind-boggling how many places you can post, and then they tell you, what time? What are the best times to post? I mean, I've seen all kinds of information on that. Um, I think they say financial information should be posted at noon time, so that's when I post all mine. Um, and then they have you know fun posts at like eight in the morning, or you know, I, they, it's it's funny the science kind of that goes behind it, but it's very interesting, and um, people should check that out too as to like when is the best time to post because people aren't always receptive to certain types of information at various times, so. Um, that was something that I picked up on. Um, so can you give us some marketing ideas for a website? Well, you know, the, the, like I said, the updating of the postings, that's, that's a big one. If somebody can link into other communities, link into other um, pages, et cetera, et cetera, like uh, I say to you, uh, hey, we, we do business, we give each other referrals, um, can we put each other's website, you know, a link to each other's websites on each other's websites. Um, that really helps for marketing, but the big thing is, is the inbound marketing. It's really the only way that works now. I know a lot of people throw money at um, radio ads, and I got to tell you, the returns on radio ads are really bad. Um, I have, yeah, I have a woman that, um, my associate was working with a woman that made beautiful jewelry and she paid something ridiculous like a thousand dollars a month to, uh, put magazine ads in. And my first question was how, how many, how much return are you getting from that? And she said, I have no idea. <laughs> so she jumped uh, it from the web or from magazine ads and went to the inbound marketing and just tripled her business in, you know, six, seven months. So marketing, you know, it, unfortunately inbound marketing is really the only way to go now. 
and I say unfortunately because it's extremely complicated. And it's one of those things where mm -hmm. if you need your wisdom teeth pulled out, do not put pliers in the back of your mouth. Like, don't do it. Let someone else do it. <laughs> Well, it definitely is complicated. I can tell you just by looking at kind of like a nurturing sequence and how you have to think the whole thing through and, um, you know, just trying to to do it. But it definitely captures interest. It definitely captures sales, and it's it's worth it. It's just it's very time-consuming on the front end. But then you can just ride the wave as it, uh, as it just kind of unfolds. So that's kind of a beautiful thing. <laughs> Exactly, and, and you're right, you have to nurture it. Um, somebody gets into the top of your funnel, they're not going to become a customer instantly. Um, and I tell people, don't sell. Instead, help. Become the person that is helpful. Um, don't be afraid of giving out free information. Because if somebody is giving me free information, they're going to be the one that I'm going to turn to when I want to buy. And that's what, all, it's what inbound marketing is all about. It takes months for an inbound campaign to really pick up momentum, but when it picks up momentum, like I said, it took the one gentleman from making 20000 a year to 400000 a year in 18 months. So right. the people that are getting on the bandwagon and doing it now are the ones that are going to be most successful because eventually everyone will be doing inbound marketing. I, I think that's, I mean, everybody's, I, you constantly go out and everybody's on their phone, on their cell phones, everybody's, I mean, it's just, it becomes, it becomes mind-boggling what's going on. Um, I, do have, I do have a question. So uh, let's see, where do you get the best pictures to use on your website from? Actually, can I throw Jeez. one more thing out there because you were talking about oh, cell phones? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, I'm oh, sorry. I'm, sorry. I no, I'm, I'm interrupting you. Um, the the one, 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 one key piece here that I tell people is that if your website is not responsive to a phone or an iPad, just be done. You've lost 60% of the people that try to find you. Because if you call up a website on an iPhone or a Galaxy tablet or anything like that, and you have to pinch and expand and you know move around to try to find it because it's not a responsive website, they won't bother. They'll go to the next one until they can find one that's easy to use on a phone. So, and that would, that's, that would be something like you'd have to have a mobile plug-in or, or is that what you're, is that what you're talking about? Actually, um, uh, yeah, a lot of the, when you're looking for a theme on WordPress, when you're looking for the bones of your website to build your website on, um, it's called a theme, and some themes are responsive and some are not, meaning if it's responsive, it will take the website from what it looks like on a computer, and it will resize it and restructure it so it's easy to surf on a phone. Mm. Yeah, otherwise you get this website that on a computer is, let's say it's 10 inches wide by, you know, 14 inches long, they'll just shrink that whole thing down to, you know, three by five inches, and then people have to zoom in and scroll around to try to find a link, and then they got to try to click on the link. It's really complicated. People won't touch websites now that aren't, respond. people won't respond to responsive websites. I hope that makes sense. No, it does make sense, because I, I can tell you just from my experience, I you just don't want to have anything to do with it. It's too frustrating to try to figure it out. You because there's too many out there that are responsive. <laughs> so right. So right. it's I, uh, I agree. I remember when they first started to become responsive, and what you would find is you would go to the website on your phone, and it would say, "Would you like the mobile version?" And I would always say yes because I know the mobile version is going to be so much easier. Well, now uh, websites are becoming. The, the newest websites and the newest themes and most of them with WordPress are already mobile friendly. So all you have to do is build the site and then automatically, you know, it will look good on the phone. So it's very important. That's awesome. That is a very good tip for sure. So um, so getting back to the pictures, like do you have websites that you go and get pictures from or, or do you, uh, I know some places you have to post you have to post where you got the website from, and then some you can pay and get like a monthly subscription, or what What, what would you suggest? Uh, I would actually, there's Pixabay, which is free, 
of course, the quality of the picture is not going to be that great. How much you pay for a picture is, is going to be the, the quality of it. But there are some sites out there that are um, dollar sites, meaning a dollar per picture. And those are great ones. So if you're going to, I could list a whole bunch of them unless someone's sitting there with a pen and paper. It's easier for me to say, search stock photos dollar and see what comes up. Um, I know that in the past we've used a company where you put in a hundred dollars and you get a hundred pictures um, and over time you know you use those up and as a website you know design firm obviously we go through a hundred pictures but yeah you can you can find them for a dollar if you if they go to cheap and all the way to free then they probably don't look great <laughs> mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and you might pay $25 for the most perfect picture ever, but if you're just trying to find pictures for blogs, um, you definitely probably want to find a, a dollar type photo store. And be very careful, very careful about using pictures, um, just pulling them off the web and then reusing them. Pictures now have links um, and they have marks and they're getting very smart with it. Photographers have been in an uproar for the last 10 years. And they're starting to be able to track where the IP addresses to the computers are that have taken them off. So just be really careful with that. I always pay for a picture. Always pay for a picture. I don't want the hassle. Wow. Yeah, I actually, I use um, freephotos.net. And you can, you, you do have to post that it came from their site and who did it and just give give credit to them. But it seems to work out great. I just hope. Maybe in the future I don't get in trouble because I did something wrong. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's, what's pretty, what's going to happen is they're going to say, "Hey, you need to, you know, tag me on there clearly so people know who it is." And it, you know, you can say, "I tried to, and and it got messed up, et cetera, et cetera." But it sounds like you're doing ethically. You're completely fine. Yeah. So that's a that's a good site. So that was that was great. So do you have any final final advice or? thoughts for people in businesses with their websites? Yes, um, my advice would be start. Start as soon as possible. You don't have to take on all of the big stuff. You don't have to take on the blogging and the SEO and the inbound marketing right away. Just get a site that looks very professional, custom, high-end, gorgeous, beautiful looking site. Um, get that fast immediately as fast as possible because people will judge you on your website they're going to judge the quality of your business on what your website looks like so you know surf the web a little bit click on a whole bunch of your competitors you'll find yourself judging your competitors on the quality of their site and you'll see that that's the psychology out there so for anyone listening I would say you know get out there and get a site as fast as possible or update your site. And when it comes to design, uh, it doesn't have to be expensive. Uh, there's a lot more options now. There's a new trend. Um, instead of paying thousands and thousands of dollars and owning it, and then they give it to you, and now you're stuck with it, and you have to update it, and you have to take care of it. Uh, the, the new trend now, which is I think what almost all companies are going to end up doing, is uh, more of like a leasing program, a small setup fee, and then you pay a very low monthly rate, and anything that happens, anything that you want to add, um, is all taken care of by the developer. So developers are starting to become uh, team members for companies instead of, you know, salesmen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean it's it's definitely a very complicated field and if you don't have if you don't have the time and and to to get into it and to learn it, you really need somebody to help you with it. So, um and like I just, said, let it, someone else take care of it. Yeah, let someone else take care of it. You make the money that you're making <laughs> and right. let someone else take care of it. And when they build a beautiful site and then the next step is that you make sure it's optimized for search engines. And then the next step is you start doing a little bit of inbound marketing, maybe a blog a week, et cetera, et cetera. And climb those steps and, and watch the number of people come in. I hear a lot of people say, well, I'll take care of the inbound marketing. Inbound marketing, you have to take care of it constantly. There is a little bit of a set it, forget it there, but if you don't continually nurture people and stay on top of them, it'll slow down again and then you'll have to start over with another campaign and what we want as a company is we want our clients saying 
yeah, now I really don't have time to take care of my website because I'm slammed. I've got great right. of work. Right, and and you know, I, one of the things to to maybe also share is that you don't ha <clears throat> just because you post a blog every day doesn't mean that you physically have to post that blog every day. We just went on vacation for ten days, and my blog was posted. It's an automatic thing; you can schedule it to post just as if you were there. So I had two weeks worth of blog posts that were done, <laughs> and they just all ran. So. Um, so well, you can we'll get, automate that as well. Absolutely. We'll get you to where you're so busy, you'll call me and say, I'm just emailing you the blogs. You put them up. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, uh, well, thank you so much for coming on with us tonight. It was a great discussion for sure. And this will be posted up to YouTube, and we'll share it. And your, uh, your information is also on our website, on our blog for today. So, um, so we really, really appreciate you coming out and coming and coming on with us tonight. Thanks, Bo. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Maybe we'll have you back again soon to uh, to go over some other topics because I'm sure one of the things about the attacks and stuff those aren't fun. So, we aren't having to deal with that. But thanks again. Absolutely. To go over our information quick, you can join us uh, on these monthly webinars, and there's the sign-up form link there for you. And then uh, you can visit our blog regularly. We post five days a week for, on, at the financialfreedomclassroom.com. Uh, and you can contact myself for some coaching, or also anytime you have any questions, you can also send that to questions at financialfreedomclassroom.com. And uh, next month, we're going to talk insurance. So so join us the first Thursday of the month, and we're going to talk to Rachel Foley from Liberty Mutual Insurance and talk about proper coverage and how to reduce your risk at the best price. So thanks, everybody, for joining us, and have a great week.